Good morning, church. Good morning. Seems to be an excitement here. What I want to know, what I want to know, is which one of you can pray for cold and snow for Christmas? We might have to have that. And that's you? Well, as we get started this morning, I want to uh, thank Brother Weiss and John and all of you and Jean. Um, Dennis uh, didn't know that we, when we left, I didn't know there was going to be snow. Uh, his, his job turned into a big job with that and several other things that happened. And besides preaching the word. Thank you to all of you that took care of things while we were gone. Um, we did survive and we were celebrating God's goodness and Karen saying, Come on, get out of here. <laughs> so let's pray. Glorious God, thank you for the opportunity we have here together. And in this season of celebration, of giving thanks, of gratitude for it, and pouring out yourself, you are God with us. Thank you. Bless us, God. We need Jesus. Amen.
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But everything by prayer and petition. And with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And with peace that transcends all understanding, where I give your hearts and your minds to Christ Jesus. Join me in prayer. God has conquered the utterance of peace, our bright and morning star. Help us not to focus so much on our own need for peace that we neglect those around us who are in conflict and turmoil. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters who depend on us to lighten their burdens. Open our hearts to love and care for them as you command us. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Please join me in our next hymn, number 218, It Came on the Night Clear.
Our key scripture is Philippians chapter 1 and verses 9 and 10. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best. As our lesson begins, I will be guiding you through video clips which illustrate the biblical principle of prayers. Powerful stuff. And so George had his earlier prayer answered, but not at all in the way he thought it should be answered. If all Clarence did was return the missing money to George, and he didn't fix anything else about George, what do you think would have happened the next time George had another money problem? Would he have found himself jumping off that bridge again? More than the money, what George needed most was a set of priorities that matched God's priorities for George's life. And that's what he got. Well, that was the answer to his prayer. Well, it's now time to stop the video and begin the discussion on the biblical principle of prayers. May God bless you. A different perspective. A God perspective. You know, in the bar, uh, George had prayed for help. And he got socked in the mouth. Have you ever felt that way? That your prayers weren't answered in the way that you expected them to be answered? Clarence gave a response to George's prayer, but George had something else in mind. He said, only one way you can help me. You don't have to have $8,000 on me, do you? Here George asked for the wrong thing and the wrong motive. He thought only his only problem was money, but his attempted suicide showed he had a bigger problem with God perspective and on the value of his life and every human life. Because God loves us, he wants the best for us. If we do not receive what we prayed for, it may be because that thing would not be in our best interest. When we match our desires to God's desires, our prayers will become more powerful as our requests parallel God's will for us. I want to remind you of a verse from Hebrews 13. I will never leave you or forsake you. That's God's promise to us. In each and every situation, he will never leave us or forsake us. What was George's motive? What did, what did he think would solve all of his problems? Money, right? You ever have that perspective? Man, if I only had a little more, that would take care of all my problems. I want to remind you that our biggest need is our need for God. And God will supply our needs according to all of His riches and glory. But our biggest and first need is reconciliation with our God. What motivates you to pray? How do you react when the answer to your prayer is no, or maybe, or not yet? What motivates you to pray? Well, I'll start out with my example on our trip. Um, our driver around these Costa Rican roadways, which were narrow in the first place, and they were, they were driving like crazy. And I'm sitting in the seat behind the driver, and most of the time, he's driving on the center line. <laughs> I did a lot of praying. I did a lot of praying. And that is kind of our first response, isn't it? It's our own needs. And God wants us to bring our needs to Him. What motivates you to pray?
besides just our own needs, it's trying to uh, understand what God's desire is for us. And, and by, by praying, I think we, we acknowledge that our dependence on God. I mean, prayer is communication with God, but I think the fact and the willingness to, to seek God out in every situation is displaying our dependency on God, our love for God, our, our need for God, our, our, our hope for God's fulfillment in our lives. Yeah. Uh, Director Frank Capra gave God the credit for his successful career in filmmaking. He says, why I came into film, I never fully understand. I'm getting a heck of a lot out of help from somewhere. And he went on to say, on the topic of talking to God, Capra said, you know, no one will believe it, but before every scene I shot, I said a silent prayer. I think that's a good example of reminding to us in each and every situation to, to first uh, declare our dependence on God in, in every situation. It takes uh, repoints our direction to God instead of our self-sufficiency. It's a God-sufficiency. How can we pray in a way that puts God at the focus? How do you pray in a way that puts God at the focus of your prayers? Yeah, sure. Well, I think it's, it's a act of humbleness that um, shows that a dependency, uh, yeah. a, a need for Him uh, to keep us humble here. Keep me humble. Mm -hmm. That uh, He's that. Not me. Humility. Is a, is a big aspect of prayer. And that's something that I think we all can learn. And sometimes we, we don't depend on God the way we should. Now, George did not know what he should be, have prayed for, but Clarence did. And after George had seen the world in which he never existed, he began to appreciate how good his life had been. Clarence summarized his answer to George's prayer with a question. Strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives, and when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? That's a reminder, again, of the sacredness and the value of your life. We might not have the same impact, we won't have the same impact as another person, but we will have an impact as the way that God allows our lives and calls us to live our lives as a child of Him. What Clarence did for George is an image of how the Holy Spirit helps us. In distressing times, our judgment may be clouded by our misery. Yet, even when we are confused about what to say, we should still pray, and the Holy Spirit will express to God the prayer that will bless us most. That's another part of that surrender and humility. Surrendering to God to to uh, to to shift our view of what it is we really need, uh, to, to shift our view to uh, God's perspective on what it is that we need. Now, why didn't George know what to pray for? Why is it that he didn't know the right thing to pray for? Well, there again, it was his perspective that having money would just uh, basically take care of all of his problems. But having a God perspective is the real solution to our biggest needs. When have you prayed for something only to receive something better? And how did that change the way you prayed? Have you ever prayed for something specific and received something different and from hindsight, you're able to see that as a better solution to your need? Anybody ever have that happen in their lives?
1 Timothy 2.1 says, I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Lest we forget, the prayers heard at the beginning of the film were actually being said at this time when George uh, was in this uh, really difficult situation. To recall a few Gower's voice, I owe everything to George Bailey. Help him, dear father. And Martini's voice, Joseph, Jesus, and Mary, help my friend, Mr. Bailey. And Zuzu's voice, please bring daddy back. Although God is in control of the events of our world in a mysterious and wonderful way, he allows us to impact those events through prayer. While Christ is the great intercessor between God and man, we are encouraged to intercede for others. Indeed, interceding for others through prayer is one of the most Christ-like things that we can do. And isn't it uh, Christ-likeness that we all want? That's what I want. What have you prayed for someone else recently? And what happened after you prayed? Have you prayed for someone else recently? Steve? Well, at first, I think in response to your last question about yeah. the blessing of the prayer, um, our daughter was married last Friday, and we had prayed for, you know, just God's presence. She was a full thing. And uh, we weren't sure how that was going to turn out, but Monday morning, our foreign exchange student from Italy walked in the door unannounced and spent oh. a week with us. Oh, wow. Uh, Wednesday, our foreign exchange student from Germany came and spent a week for us. Friday morning, we had five inches of pure, beautiful white snow, and it quit at noon. And all the photos were taken at 1.30 to 2.30 with the white backdrop. You know, um, people came from 13 or 14 different states, I believe. Um, and the blessing that we received from their willingness to travel in the winter, mm -hmm. you know, 26, 27 hours of flight yeah. from two different countries was just overwhelming. So uh -huh. we continue to pray for them and their well-being. Yeah. And through that prayer of them, I think it elevates our love for them, but also the love of gratitude for our Father mm -hmm. and our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Totally unexpected that everything came together other than Laura's uh, strength yeah. and ability of that throughout the two weeks or two and a half weeks. Right. Other than that, God's blessing is just incredible. He gave her enough strength to make it through a Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God is still good that. even when we're afflicted with something in a time of joy and when you want to feel your best. Yeah. And the gift of other people and praying for them and seeing God intervene in their lives. And so we are going to uh, credit or blame you for that still. Karma um, <laughs> and you. <laughs> no. But wait, yes. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. Unless we forget the prayers heard at the beginning of the film, which we talked about. Um, and we talked about that again, uh, praying for one another, and that is what we're called to as God's children, as reconciled sons and daughters of God. Who do you need, who do you know that needs help this week? And how we pray for God to help them. And you don't have to say that out loud, but you. We all have uh, an influence in people's lives, and the best influence we can pray is for God's will to be done in their lives, and that's the best prayer to pray, right? God's will be done. Before George turned to God in the bar, he was already considering suicide because he was anxious about everything else and prayerful about nothing. And that's why Clarence had to show George that his life, far from being worthless, was a great value. You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? 
While it is difficult not to worry, whenever we do worry, we should pray. In doing so, we will find the, the real peace of God in our hearts. What the world calls peace is based on the absence of trouble. However, what God calls peace is based on the knowledge that He is always present, that He never leaves us or forsakes us during those difficult times that we all endure. And of course, one of our favorite verses is Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which Karen used in the call to worship. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So again, why was George so anxious about his problem? How did his lack of prayer make his problems worse? And how does that apply to our lives? And our need to quickly go to God rather than as a last resort? Maybe that's the question. Can we all grow in that maybe this week? God is not a last resort. He's our first and primary place to turn. The prayer that never fails. Yet not my will, but your will be done. Having seen the sad lives of his family and friends in the world without him, George realized he had made a terrible mistake in thinking his life was of no importance. And finally, George prayed to have his life back, acknowledging he was wrong and God was right. There again, that's a, that's a starting point for for us, is acknowledging that God is right, He is always right, and we need to align ourselves with God. Finally, George prayed to have his life back, as I said, acknowledging that God is right. I want to live again. I want to live again. Please, God, let me live again. Often our prayers are led by what we think is right for our lives. However, we should consider the example Christ gave us when He prayed. Rather than pray for what he wanted for his life, Christ prayed for what God wanted, what his Father wanted. Have you ever been sorry to get what you wanted? And how did you learn uh, it was not the thing that you needed? This took me back to a memory I had when I was a kid. And, and uh, we used to, and I've shared this before, there was a football contest that was on Channel 13 and Rockford, and if you guess the points closest to to the actual Monday night score, you won a prize. And I was so determined that I needed this BB gun out of the uh, Chamber of Mullins catalog, and the gift certificate was for 25 bucks. At Jack's or better, that was the restaurant. Well, I was a dumb kid, I didn't know why. I thought I was going to get 25 bucks if I won. So I sent that in and I prayed that night because the football game was happening and my score wasn't anywhere close and I was just praying out to God, God, please let me win this. And the next day I got a phone call that I had won this. It was a humiliating time for me because I realized that my wants were not God's wants for me. And, uh, that was a lesson I learned about being careful what you pray for. And, um, and again, aligning with God and not just your own worldly desires. Donna Reed, who grew up Methodist, wrote about her reliance on God during difficult times. She said, God still lives and rules and can handle our problems, whatever they are and whatever they may be, if we will just let him. I want you to think about what area of life that you have yet to relinquish to God. What aspect of your life have you been unwilling to surrender to God? And what area have you not accepted God's view of life for you? Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for this Avenue of communion, this means of grace, of, of communicating with you through prayer, for acknowledging our desperate need of you, 
for our dependence upon you in, in all things. God, help us to, to receive and welcome your perspective on life, that each life is of divine value. Help us to recognize our need to pray for one another, to pray that your will would be done in my life and in the lives of others. God, thank you. Amen. And our, this leads us right into our time of corporate prayer. Isn't it exciting uh, to hear the kids practicing and preparing for Christmas Eve and retelling the story that's a sacred story? Yeah. I have a thank you prayer for, from the young people at the Black Hawk Church. Oh. Christmas card. Oh. Or the old people. Or the old people. She got your old Oh. So yeah, uh, Sylvia so and the view. We pray to you, Father, for all of these prayers that were mentioned this morning and for those that weren't mentioned, giving you thanks that you are above all and that in each and every circumstance we can come and pour out our hearts to you and that you are mindful of us and our condition and our situation. We pray to you, Father, that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples so many years ago and we pray to you this morning, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Let's stand and sing together as well with my soul, 377. <laughs>
13. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is anyone sick? He should call on the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If you have sinned, he will be, you will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins each to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. So, at the conclusion of the service, um, I want to offer uh, anointing and prayer up front. If anybody would like to come forward for, for anointing with oil and prayer. Um, otherwise, receive God's blessing. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you, he is faithful, and he will do it. Go now that love, that joy, that peace of Christ to love God and serve his world. Amen. Thank you.